Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm going to be doing some watercoloring and I am going to be using um, some Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. By all means, please use what you have on hand. And then I'm going to be using the Sweet Sunflowers set from Honey Bee as well as the Itty no wait, Bitty Buzzwords Fall. Um, I've used these quite a bit lately. I'm a big fan of the stamps and dies and I love the way that they work together. So we're actually going to end up making three cards um, and we're going to be doing a emboss resist. This was the first card that I was able to make after having Caitlin. Um, so that was just over three weeks ago um, and so I didn't really obviously have a lot of time to craft um, and so when I am kind of feeling like I want to craft but I'm not really sure what I want to do um, coloring or painting uh, flowers because I love I love the florals um, is just a really easy mojo motivator for me and so I went through my honeybee stamps and just kind of picked something that spoke to me um, knowing that it was fall obviously a lot of you know just for timing purposes we're heading into Christmas card making and things like that but um, I was just really feeling the sunflowers and I thought that they would be a um, pretty card turns out they are um, so that's what we're gonna do uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I'm doing and then I'm gonna talk about some sales and then we're gonna get into story time this is a long video which means we should have a good amount of time to finish talking about Caitlin's birth story I know a lot of you were waiting for that so here um, I treated my paper with the uh, embossing tool um, the one that I've been using is actually from rabbit hole designs and I really like that one and then I've stamped in Versamark ink the reason you can see it is because I clearly did not clean my stamps um, before I put them away which does not really surprise me because I frequently forget to clean my stamps stained stamps bother some people they don't bother me I don't it, it does not even register on my radar honestly um, and then I'm just going to heat emboss in white I am still as you saw I was using the piece of paper I am still using um, just trying to feel out what kind of white embossing powder I want to stick with um, is the one that was in my tub is old this would definitely go faster if you did have one like in your tub and you were just using the spoon with it instead of every single time dumping it on a piece of paper and then having to dump it back in um, and then I'm going to create some masks just so I can create a full piece of patterned paper um, and these uh, ready cut ones are five by seven so that's going to give me enough surface area to actually create three cards um, so yeah there's that the sale so it is um, like Black Friday was yesterday and then Honeybee is having sales all weekend long um, so today's is buy one get one 50% off of dies um, so if you have a standalone die like a cover plate that you've been eyeballing or if you have a stamp set and you're like man I really wish I would have picked up the dies um, or maybe you want a new stamp set and you want to pick up the dies to go with it um, so you can buy one get one 50% off tomorrow's sale is buy one get one 50 percent off of paper pads and envelopes um so if you're a paper pattern paper person that may be the the deal you want to go for um their envelopes are fantastic we actually just used one the other day because it was my mother-in-law's birthday and i did not have a card we had not picked one up we were a little busy with newborn um not that we don't love our you know love my mother-in-law or eric's mom um but we just didn't it just you know kind of just slipped right by us uh so peanut actually made her a card and then he used a honeybee envelope um that was like an ombre red and yellow uh that worked out and matched his card perfectly so then monday's deal um which is really like for me the one that that i would be most interested in is it's an extra I think it's 25 percent yeah it's an extra 25 percent off um all retiring and clearance items here's why this is fantastic because honeybee doesn't just carry honeybee products honeybee carries lots of products so they carry different papers and inks specialty papers like glitter papers embossing powders things like that 
So their clearance items are not just their own items, even though that's what I'm interested in. Um, I do typically buy like my Nina uh, paper from them. I buy my glue. Um, they carry some of the like tonic specialty glitter papers, which I'm a huge fan of. So that may be something to check out. The retiring section has so many florals in it, guys. There's peonies, there's cosmos, there are anemones. So if you love floral stamps like I do, go check those out. They also have like a ton of super cute ones um, that are retiring. There's like a hot air balloon, there's a robot set, there's um, I think some chickens or something. Um, there's like 13 pages of retiring products. So I'm sure that you could, they're already discounted and then you're getting an additional 25% off. So um, I would definitely check that out and I will link um, all of that below in case you're watching on YouTube. So back to the card. This is such a long video, guys. I was so, like, I was up here. It took me two days to paint this. Let's just be real. Let's just have a real conversation. It took me two days to paint it um, because it's just, it's a big background. And I was kind of enjoying my process. You can see that I do have masks for all of these things. And really, those are more for, um, to get my leaves behind my flowers, um, not so much because I layered a flower on top of each other, though you totally could. Um, that's not really what I used it for. I used these two large uh, sunflower stamps that are included in the set. Um, there's also like some grasses or some wheat or something that's in the set too, so you could really easily build a bouquet. Um, but I wanted to tuck my leaves underneath my flowers, so that's what I use those for. And then just went through and did that whole process. You may have noticed we have um, sped things up a hair. There, we will intermittently be speeding things up as we go along in the process, just because I wanted you to be able to kind of see how the whole thing came together. But I also wanted, you know, to not take up your whole Saturday. <laughs> You're welcome. So here, Basically, you saw me, I started in the middle. When you're creating your own pattern paper, that's what you wanna do, you wanna start in the middle. So that way you don't leave this hole that you have to try to find something to fill. If you start in the middle and work your way out, um, then it will look more like you cut a piece from some pattern paper or it was a whole piece of a printed design. Speaking of cutting things out or having your whole printed design, um, it also helps if you let some of your images overhang the edges so that way it looks like it's one fluid design, one fluid paper, um, and there's no breaks and it doesn't look awkward that you're trying to fit things in. So those are just a couple of tips on how to create your own pattern paper. Um, you certainly could do this with just regular stamping without doing the heat embossing. Um, but I thought it's been a while since I've done an emboss resist and it's kind of a fun technique. Um, it does make watercoloring a little bit easier because that embossing is raised and it acts as kind of like, it creates like a little well for your pigment um, to sit in and then you're less likely to mix them into each other so you can work next to two wet areas if you're careful. And that's really what I was going for because I knew I didn't have a lot of time um, just because obviously I got a little baby and she takes up the majority of my time. So um, those are just some some things, some tips that you can use on, on other cards as well. So once I am all done heat embossing and we get into the watercoloring, I used Daniel Smith watercolors. Um, you can certainly use whatever you have on hand. Uh, if you have pan watercolors, I have some Koi's, I have um, Altenews that I like as well. Um, there's a bunch of different watercolors out there. You can also use watercolor markers for this. Um, if you have those, like your Zig Clean color markers, things like that. Um, you would just either color them on a block and pick them up with your paintbrush or color them direct to paper and then blend them out with a uh, water pen or a paintbrush, whichever, you know, one you prefer. I don't really like water brushes. I never feel like I have good control over the quantity of water that's coming out of them, but other people do amazing things with them. So, you know, who am I? Um, but yeah, so... We have, um, we were previously talking in my prior video. Um, we're gonna slow things down again. 
um, just so you can kind of see uh, how I went about it. So I filled my centers. I used a, why can't I think of the name of it? It's the gold one. Hmm. It's got a weird name with it. But anyway, um, I used that. <laughs> it will be linked in the description below uh, because I cannot remember the name of it. Um, and then I added in some darker browns to the center of the flowers. And another, I think I added in another layer of this color even. Um, the trick with watercolors you have to remember is that they dry back lighter than the way that they look when they're wet. So sometimes you have to go back in and add another layer of color, which you'll see toward the end I do with the background. I wasn't happy with how it looked. I wanted it to be a little bit deeper color. And so I just went back in and added another layer and it was totally fine. Um, but I like to kind of add to them um, while they're still wet. So if I know that I'm looking and typically I am looking for deeper richer color with my watercolors that's just my preferred um, color palette uh, so usually I will go back and add them while they are still wet and just continue dropping in color until it is the um, darkness or intensity that you're you're looking for uh, if one of them dries down and you need to go in and add another color that's not a big deal you can just re-wet it to um, lay those colors down on top of it. So here, once the middles are done, I'm going to show you two different ways to do um, the sunflower. The first way is a little bit less, I don't want to say messy, because neither one of them were really messy. Um, it's a little more refined. It's a little more meticulous. It gives you a lot more um, control with the watercolor. And I know that's something that a lot of people struggle with when they're doing watercolor because um, typically in order for watercolor to look the way that most people think it should, okay, that's not, that's, there's not a right or a wrong way, so I don't want to label it that way. But for watercolor to look blended the way most people think it should, a lot of times, and I am guilty of this too, people keep messing around with that. And then you create kind of like one tone um, because you've mixed your colors too much. You're much better off starting in small sections. That's what I'm doing here. I'm laying down uh, my yellow and then I'm going to go back in with that gold color and I'm just going to drop it in a few different places. Typically I'm adding it to the petals that are behind to create a little bit of a shadow. And then because I personally really like color variation, once I've added in a little bit of the gold, I'm also going to add in like a pinkish orange. Um, this is a mixture of the yellow and a little bit of the uh, quidacridone magenta, I think is what it is. Um, and so that way it creates kind of like an orangish pinkish hue um, just so that it, not all the colors are very, or not all the sunflowers are very one note, that they have a little bit more dimension. Uh, yellow is a hard color to get dimension with because it's so pale um, that, you know, if you add in too much of the browns or the golds, um, it kind of overtakes your your flower. Um, I try not to pay too much attention to that. I try to just drop the colors in and move along. But going in section by section does give you a little bit more to, um, a little more control because you have a smaller area you have to pay attention to. The second way I'm going to do the flower, um, and you'll see once we get a little um, further along, is I just took, the, what I'm working with now is a number two round brush. I have a number eight round brush, which is usually what I do my backgrounds with. But I'm going to use that to just drop in a whole bunch of yellow into my petals. And then that way all I have to do is drop in a couple of my you know shadow colors and then I can move on to the next flower. Uh, like I said, I was looking for ways to kind of speed up this process because I am very limited on time and I am conscientious of that. So, story time. Okay, so where we left off at last time was that we were we were in labor. Caitlin's heart rate had gone down. They flipped us all around trying to figure out um, if there was some pressure on the cord. 
uh, that was cutting off, you know, her oxygen or what the issue was. So they finally were able to get her heart rate back up. At this point, my doctor asked me if I was going to get an epidural. And I'm no hero, y'all. I was getting the epidural. I already knew I was getting the epidural and I was happy to get it. So she was like, why don't we go ahead and get that in place? So that way, in case we have to go for a C-section, we already have that in. Um, and then it's just a matter of changing your uh, medication. Okay, cool. So they bring in, they, they kick Eric out. I don't really know why they kick Eric out, honestly. Um, with Nathan, when I had my epidural, they also kicked my ex-husband out. So I'm not really sure why that is. Apparently there's no, there's no viewer parties to the epidural. It's probably because the needle's so big and they don't want anybody to see it. Um, but so anyway, so he comes in, super nice guy. By the way, everybody has a student. Okay. Just so we're clear here. My OB has a student. My anesthesiologist has a student. One of the other nurses has a student nurse. Like there's students everywhere. Um, so he comes in, he asked me if I ever had an epidural before. I said, yes, we're going through, you know, the process. And he tells me, <laughs> he tells me, you might feel like, he's like, I call them zingers, but it's like a, um, like a electrical shock, like down your leg, but it's not going to hurt. It's just going to feel like, you know, you got shocked or whatever. And sure enough, I can feel it all the way down my spine into my right leg, like down to my kneecap. And I'm like, who told you that didn't hurt? Like all the epidurals you've had, dude, you thought it didn't hurt? I'm like, yeah, that's not true. That's a, that's a fallacy. It's a, that did, it does hurt. So we finally get the epidural done. He was a super nice guy. We're kind of standing around, um, waiting for the OB to come back in to see, you know, kind of what we're doing. They bring Eric back in. Um, and she was like, okay, we got the epidural in place in case things start to go, you know, kind of sideways and we have to go, um, for the C-section, like, you know, we'll just change. And the anesthesiologist explained to me, there were kind of like three levels, which is the epidural that you have when you're in active labor, which just kind of makes everything like pins and needles. And then there's another layer of, um, like they can give you one that takes a while to work, but it's going to completely numb you from like the chest down. There's one that works faster, which will do the same thing. Um, and then there's a general anesthetic. Now he asked me, have you ever had general anesthesia before? And I was like, yeah, like I've had teeth pulled and you know, like I've been out before, like, and he was like, no, 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 no. I didn't know that that was a thing. And he was like, no, no. He's like, if you have to go under a general anesthetic, like we're going to have to put like, you know, we're going to knock you out. We're going to have to put like a breathing tube in there. I was like, holy, what? No, I've never, nope, never done that. That's, that's not, I've not something I have done. And I didn't realize that's what it was called. So I was also educated. So while we're standing there having this conversation um, and the OB comes in and she's like, we're going to, you know, let things go. One note back to the card. So there was a pool of um, kind of like the brown paint water mixture that was sitting on top of my embossing in um, the flower. I just went in with a dry brush and set my brush right on top of it. And then the brush kind of absorbs that back up and then I can wipe it off on my paper towel. Just a little trick that is kind of helpful when you're watercoloring. If you have more water, or if you have water in an area that you don't want it, don't be afraid to blot it up either using your brush or a paper towel. Watercolor is very forgiving. If you don't like the direction that it's going, just put a paper towel on top of it, absorb the water. If you need to put clean water on top of it to remove some of the pigment, typically watercolors will allow you to do that as well. Okay, I'm moving on to the background. Um, and for the background of this, I wanted to, again, some color variation. So all of it is going to be blue, um, but it's going to have, um, some violet and some teal in it as well. Two different ways to put it down. The first way I put it down was just with the blue paint already on my paintbrush. And then, um, you know, I just painted it in there and added water to spread it out. On the left hand side here, I'm going to put water down first and then drop the color in. You'll see this gives you a much lighter result. Um, I was definitely looking for a darker background. So I did not, I, I did a variation of the both of them. So I would have darker and lighter sections, but I prefer the sections that are darker, just so we're clear. Okay. 
So while we're having this conversation, um, Caitlin's heart rate like tanks and my OB is like, okay, we're going now. Like basically throws this Tyvek suit at Eric, like dad suit up. Somebody will come get you and take you to the OR. We're out. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. So they take me to the OR. I am, my body is in shock at this point. Um, well, no, I skipped over that part. Okay. We got to go back. So during the previous part where her heart rate went down, um, before I had my epidural, like they, she was trying to check my cervix. I don't know if she was trying to turn Caitlin or what she was doing, but at the time, um, like I could just feel, like I could just feel all of this fluid, like gushing out. And at one point I asked like, what was that? Because in my head, I was like, if that's blood, like we're in real trouble here. Um, which apparently it was a mixture of amniotic fluid and uh, quite a bit of blood um, that, so they were trying to figure out what the issue was. So then now we're going, you know, now we're going to the ER. So my body's in shock. I cannot stop shaking. Like I'm vibrating off of like this hospital bed. Um, they take me in, they have to strip down my arms. Um, I feel like I'm going to be sick. I tell the anesthesiologist, like, I think I'm going to throw up. And he's like, we're going to give you some anti-nausea meds. But in the meantime, like, here's this basin, turn your head to the right if you need to vomit. Like, thankfully, the anti-nausea meds work and I didn't end up getting sick. Back to the card. So this is the next day. Everything is dry at this point. I'm not happy with how dark the background is. I felt like it was still too light and I didn't have enough contrast. So I'm just going to go back in and do the whole thing all over again to add in more pigment. That's always an option too. Looking at your card the next day is a great way to decide whether or not you still need to keep working on it. Sometimes instead of fussing over it, just walk away, let it dry and see what you've got before you start trying to go in there and fix things. Okay. So now we're back in the OR. Eric's waiting in the hallway. Um, they're, you know, they got the curtain up, the whole deal. And um, it's, I have no idea what's going on. I can't see anything past the curtain. So um, finally, they bring Eric in. They had explained to me that I might have a difficult time breathing during um, the surgery because with the epidural and it basically paralyzing everything from the chest down, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have the aid of my diaphragm to help me breathe. So I might have a little bit of trouble breathing. So Eric doesn't know this. They finally lead him in. They brought him in the wrong door. Um, so instead of bringing him in like the back door, which would be behind the curtain, they brought him in the front door, which they had already, um, cut me open <laughs> so like he walks in and I mean it, it the whole scene's kind of laid out before him fortunately um you know partially I'm sure kind of what he does for a living he did not freak out the doctor the anesthesiologist that brought him back was like I probably should have brought you in the other door and Eric's like it's cool just take me to my wife like just take me to where I need to be so he was sitting like at a stool by my head he was a absolute rock star he was like everything's fine the baby's fine you're gonna be fine like I was so worried um about her not that I knew it was a her at the time but like I was just so worried about the baby and that they were okay because you couldn't like I didn't know what was happening um and so there I can I can hear what they're saying like during the whole thing and like at one point she was like well this baby's got Eric's shoulders like they're tugging to get her out and um like I can't hear her crying um which is like the first thing that I remember from Nathan being born is like that cry that first newborn cry and like I'm not hearing any crying um so I am starting to panic and then eventually they get her to the point where she starts crying. They ask me like, you know, do you want dad to tell everybody what it is? Because obviously we had waited to be surprised. And I was like, yeah. So Eric stands up, see her, you know, tells me it's a girl. We already had our name picked out. So we knew her name was going to be, you know, Caitlin. Um, they take her over to be weighed. She's actively crying now, thank God. 
um, which is literally what I was saying in the OR. I made Eric, <laughs> I made Eric, they made me take off all my jewelry because, you know, I'm having surgery. I made Eric put my cross in his pocket because I couldn't wear it. And it's literally been with me every single day since I was 21 in one shape, way, or form. It was like pinned underneath my wedding dress. Like, so I made him put it in his pocket. Um, but anyway, so thankfully she was healthy. I was good. Um, you know, they like sewed me up and everything, uh, and then I, Eric was able to bring her over to me so that I could see her. Um, so just super grateful that it was a good outcome. What it ended up being was that we had a placental uh, abruption. So the placenta had pulled away from the uterine wall and then I was actively bleeding and she wasn't getting enough oxygen. And so that's what ended up being our emergency. Um, so obviously we ended up being in the hospital for four days. I have so many more stories about that, but like that is how Caitlin came into the world kind of in her own way, decided that November 4th was going to be her birthday, whether we liked it or not. <laughs> and it was what it was. So back to the card. Um, cards. Uh. So I told you in the beginning that I really like being able to have the stamps and dies for sentiments. And I do. So this particular card, I heat embossed the stamp and then I cut it out with the shadow portion of the die. And then, um, so now I have like this white on navy blue, all of them were navy blue. This white on navy blue um, sentiment, uh, which is perfectly die cut. And then um, that's one way that you can use them. And um, like Honeybee has a bunch of these for different, they have like a general bitty buzzwords one. And then there's all sorts of different ones um, that are just specific to that word. But so this one says, thankful for your friendship. And this is the largest portion of the background that I used for this one. I used just a corner section of it. I ended up matting it on this navy blue cardstock. Do you remember when we matted everything? Like scrapbooking days when everything had a mat and it's mat had a mat. Yeah, I remember that. This one says friends are the family you choose and the family portion of it, I used the actual die for the word family. I stacked it up on like three die cuts of white so that it would still have some dimension, but I wouldn't have to cut out teeny tiny foam pieces. And then for this last card, I just stamped them down flat in navy blue ink. Um, I just used the stamps for this um and this one says, let me remember, hold on. It says, uh, give thanks with a grateful heart, which is all, like I said, they're all from the same um, stamp set. You can make so many different sayings with all of these. So I stamped that down the first time and then um, I wanted it just to be a little bit darker. So I stamped it a second time as well. I did use the sunflower strip as kind of a spacer. Uh, for this card and then I ended up adding like a border of navy blue to the top and bottom. The sunflower portion was added with foam tape as well. I used the vintage Christmas um, rhinestones for all of them. This one got some like uh, goldish yellow rhinestones with a sentiment and then I used a light blue and a white um, for the other two cards, I love adding the little rhinestones to my sentiments. I just feel like it draws the eye and adds a little bit of shine, which I'm, you know, I'm here for. I did, I'm gonna be honest with you, I did add some shimmer to the cards just on the sunflower part, but the shimmer pens can reactivate the paint if you're not careful. So just kind of play, play that by ear whether or not you want to do that. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you check out the sales. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.